All right, afternoon guys. It's all been happening here. Uh, if you remember in the last video, I said that I couldn't get the air filter in. Well, that's in there now. I've had to remove the back part of the gate cage. So luckily that was just bolted in. And then you can squeeze it down in that gap there then. If I'd have known that in the first place, I would have um, put it in when the engine was out. Because uh, it's just hanging on a hang on a bracket. Just down there, you can see that little nut and bolt there. Um, but yeah, that's all in now. Uh, so I've just got to put the cage back in. And... Um, Yeah, I don't think that I need it out anymore. I don't think anything else is going in there. So, hmm. What a lot of people do is they cut here and the other side and they sleeve this part of the bar. But it wasn't that much of an issue getting it out. As I say, it's all, it's all in there. And I just buy bolts just bolted in uh, so as I say I normally grease all the bolts as well so they came out okay um, again I don't think I need to have this bit of the cage anymore so that can go back in uh, the only other thing that I've done is I've taken out all the the windscreen scuttle and stuff uh, ready for the windscreen to be fitted they're coming over in the next couple of days to do that so yeah, let me get this cage back in and then we'll move on to the next step. Well, I'm just getting this um, roll bar back together. Um, Mike deploys the, I think they are roll bar offset brackets or something just to move the roll bar back a bit so it clears this arm here. Um, yeah, so I'm just getting that back together. I'm just changing out some of these damaged bushes. I found two so far, so that's one of them, and that's the the other one that I've already just changed out of there. Is that one? It might actually be that one. Um, but yeah, just gonna get these ones changed over with my spares, um, and then get all that up and mounted and back together. Right, obviously got the wall bar back on. I've got the wheels on as well. Uh, we just wanted to see how it sat. Uh, there's a few little niggles at the moment, um, which we're trying to work through. Um, mainly that it sits really high, like the top of the wheels like here, um, and it's at its lowest point. Uh, Mike has said to me that it will settle over in time, so. I then thought we'll get the front done and um, then at least we can get it sat down on its on its wheels and all settling in at the same time then. Um, so I've made a start on dropping the front subframe. Pretty much exactly the same as the back subframe. A uh, little bit less to do. Um, so it's just a case of top shocks, uh, the battery cable, your radiator hoses, your um, ABS sensors um, and then obviously we got the oil cooler pipes as you can see I, I was right that was running through the middle of the subframe uh, so had to drop all them out just disconnect them from the, the heat hose because they're tied in with cable ties to the heat hoses at the minute uh, yeah so I'm now going to make a start in fitting the Mokstatur front suspension kit again exactly the same as the video that I've already done uh, it's just at the front but the reason why you need to drop the sub the front subframe is to get rid of this crash bar or longitudinal bar whatever they want to call them uh, there's a couple of bolts here um, and there's one here you could probably struggle to get these ones with it in the vehicle but you can't get that one so for the I know this subframe has already been out uh, come out really easy so just 
dropped it out we'll get rid of these and then down in the depths down there is a upper arm pivot shaft that you need to extract uh, so yeah I'm just gonna get on get it done and then I'll update you when it's either all back in or we're doing something different right we've got one um, assembly on the front I have done things a little bit differently um, to what I did the rears um, after I put the video on doing the rears Mike had actually messaged me and said you could have made yourself a lot lot easier um, by doing your set steps differently um, so what he says to me was to leave the hub off um, leave the bump stop off and then put the top mount onto the shock which then made it a lot easier to fit in the shims and then put that whole assembly into the bottom of the arm not doing the bolt up and then bringing this assembly up um, and then doing the three bolts that hold the upper mount in and then you can then get this bolt in at the bottom all I did was and he he was right it did make the things a lot easier all I did was got a lever bar underneath the collar and just levered it up I only had to do slightly and there wasn't too much pressure on and and then that bolt just slipped straight in so and then we put the hub assembly on and then yeah that was that was that and then I had the difficulties with fitting the bump stop um, and again I tried to jack it up but I was lifting the whole subframe off uh, so what I actually did was I undone these three mounts here which then meant I could lift this whole arm up quite freely I've got the bump stop in at the bottom, done the nut up and then let everything drop down and push this back and then these bolt holes lined up and there was no reason to use any lever bars whatsoever. Um, so yeah, <laughs> hopefully the next side that will just be nice and straightforward. I'll get the arm in, I'll get the bump stop in. I'll get the bottom pivot and this bit in I'll then get all this assembly in and then hopefully it'll go much better but I'll obviously update you when I've when I've done that situation um, but yeah just after doing the rears the other day and then come back and doing the fronts you know I've, I've cracked the side out in just over half an hour so once you get used to it that's not difficult at all um, and as you can see the reason for m removing this longitudinal cross member is to gain access to that bit there so yeah that's it uh, the only other thing is I've obviously replaced the discs with um, the black coated EVC ones again like we did on the rears so what I'm going to do is I'm going to chuck that longitudinal cross member on and then crack on and do the other side hopefully i can get that done today and then get the whole subframe back up to where it needs to be right there we go it's the other side all done and buttoned up over there um so yeah really straightforward once you get to the last one that one literally took me 50 minutes um, and that's to strip out all the old stuff and also and as well this whole unit was all built up so I had to then take that apart so it's um yeah it wasn't bad at all yeah, I got all the box sections back on so it's literally just a case of putting that up in there somewhere um, once we've done that then hopefully we can connect all the all the oil pipes and all the coolant pipes and make it start Oh, all the software's back up and running now, so uh, 
the saw up in there all nice very little clearance but that's in there nevertheless um, I found the adjustment knob here at the front here you might be able to reach through with the wheel on full lock to um, to adjust it but we'll see ABS sensors all connected brake lines brakes they're all in as you can see these brake pads very little wear on them at all um, the only thing that I haven't done and probably won't do is connect that line to the to the mountain point because as you can see there's a little bit on the on the tight side doesn't quite want to sit in there properly so I'm just going to leave it like that it doesn't rub on anything while it's like that so I'll just tighten that that bolt up on there and the same on the other side obviously uh, what have I done underneath all the bolts are in for the subframe uh, coolant hoses in the only thing I haven't done is obviously I fed the oil lines back on top of that bracket there for the stainless steel coolant pipes uh, so I just need to feed that back and connect them and then cable tie it all in place uh, the battery line is all in place and that comes up and goes into a junction point here so that goes from the start motor um, and then I've got another one off an old scrap vehicle that goes all the way to the, to the battery cutoff switch by that grommet and then comes back through here and then obviously I've got the ancillaries and everything that's just a, a junction point in there so it's just a, a two-way terminal block so it's all connected it's not fused or anything um, yeah so all the ABS lines are all connected up uh, I've removed the hard line for the clutch so that runs down the back that subframe so we'll have the subframe out I took all that out so I just need to run the braided hose uh, and what we've got in here it's just a pinch bolt on the on the steering rack arm if I can zoom you in there you go so that's all nice and tightened up tightened up sorry yeah so I'm literally just going to tighten these bolts up here uh, for the brake line bracketry um, stick the wheels on, stick the front bumper on, um, put the oil lines from the oil cooler back on, um, and feed my clutch line in. So I'll get all them done and I'll come back to you when I've done all that, and that will probably be the end of the video. So just button this up and I'll come back to you. Well, I've managed to sort out this um, broken bolt that was in my block. Um, forgot to record any of it. I just got on and done it. So apologies for that. But all I've done, I I've taken some pictures. So I'll inlay the pictures after this little chat. Um, so you can see how short this bolt is and how much was taken off. Um, I think that came out to about this sort of length. Um, so we drilled into the centre of the bolt, we put an easy out and hope, luckily we could unwind the bolt from the block but I just chewed up all the threads at the beginning where this bit of chat away so I then drilled it all out, um, re-tapped it to a bigger size then heli-coiled it and then I've put all the standard stuff back in so the standard um, adjustment bracket and all that sort of stuff all the standard bolts um, I don't know why that snapped but it came it came loose on test day so I tightened it up and I didn't go mad I just talked it back up to 38 new meters which is the required spec for a M10 stainless bolt um, and then it came loose again so I locked tied it and then talked it back up again and what I thought it came loose again, but it didn't, it actually snapped it. Um, but luckily we managed to dodge a bullet there, we got it out, we got the other 
all the other stuff back in. So this is an MG Mania adjustment. Um, never got on with it very well because where this goes onto the alternator here, you can't get a spanner on there properly to tighten that lock nut up because um, it fouls on the on the alternator. So I never did like that setup. Um, yeah, so we've gone back to the standard setup, um, and then obviously it's got an adjustment screw in the in the alternator itself that you use to press up against the bracket and that um, puts tension on it. And once the, when they're all three are nice and um, loose, they are easier to use than what these things are. So anyway, I'll insert some pictures now of the process of what we've done and um, we'll move on to the next tasks. all back together now all the wheels are on front bumpers on uh, what else have I done it's been a few days since I picked up the camera uh, all the oil lines are now in the braided clutch line is now in I uh, just need to stick the exhaust on at the back here and put the rear wheels on Uh, what else has been done? Oh yeah, I've um, got all the stuff buttoned up at the top here. So, all the charcoal canister, the ECU, the expansion tank, and that's all now got some fresh coolant in it. So I've just been topping that up and I've left that over a couple of days, um, over the weekend, so that I can just find all the air pockets. Uh, but I still need to bleed that. Still need to bleed the clutch system. What have I done in here? I don't think I've done anything else in here as of yet, apart from I've put the roll cage, the back half of the roll cage back in after having to remove it for the air filter. Uh, I think what else has been done? Oh yeah, the windscreen's been fitted. So I've now got a heated windscreen. As you see, that's uh, a twin element one wires on the other side there as well so I'm just waiting for a relay kit to to turn up and then I can wire that in it was by the time I bought the relays relay holders fuse holders and a load of wire to do it it worked out more expensive than buying a relay kit um, I got it off Moss Europe I think it is which is a big Land Rover um, place who sell parts um, but I'll get into more detail in that when I go to, to fit the relays uh, what else has been done oh yeah I've got my father-in-law coming at some point to spray this side the other side I need to go and collect my boot lid and bonnet my father last ones and then he's going to come over uh, during the week and um, paint them but we have noticed there's a little bit of a a rusty spot here um, so that's going to be my next job is to get that all sorted uh, before he painted it you can see where someone's just blobbed a low filler on top of a rusty hole I'm um, pretty, no, pretty sure who I know that is um, but that's that we'll do it properly try and get as much fill out as we can um, that is about it to be honest with you I haven't really done much else as I say all the, all the lines are now ran so it's um, 
I can put the fluids in it and start it up if I wanted to, but I've got all the, the dash for the parts, but I'll need to still figure out the wiring. Um, but my main priority at the minute is just getting that little bit of rust sorted and before my father-in-law comes and going to pick up the, the fiberglass bonnet and boot lid. And so that can all be in paint. And then I can move on to another job. Um, but I think that will do it for now. Uh, probably a, a short little video. Not too sh sure how long it is as yet. Um, but yeah, I'll leave it there. And I think the next time you see me is when we tackle this rust in that rear um, sill section. So um, yeah, we'll see you in the next one.